So welcome to Roo Sports. This video is about how to play pickleball for tennis players. And so if you are watching this video, you've either already tried it for a bit and you wanna learn how to get better at it, or you're just journeying into this for the very first time, just like I did years ago. I've grown up playing tennis my whole life. Clients of mine as a financial advisor said, hey, why don't you try this sport called pickleball? Pickle what? It's different, but it's very similar to tennis in certain ways. And so we're gonna help you in a very quick, efficient video help you understand the differences and the strengths of being a tennis player and the differences of pickleball. We're gonna keep the video nice and short so that there's less listening and more pickling. So the very first thing to note here when we're playing pickleball is this new line that we have here. It's close to our service box, but it is here as a non-volley zone. So the biggest difference is we cannot volley in this zone, nor can we volley and then come into it afterwards. And so that stops us from just climbing all over the net and then just putting everything away because the ball doesn't travel quite as fast as it does in tennis. And so if we were able to do that in pickleball, we would just be up on the net the entire time and the game wouldn't have the same little strategy to it. So this being the non-volley zone, again, we cannot volley in it and we cannot volley outside of it and then come in and as a result. So with that in mind, a lot of the play in the part that's very unique about tennis is when we're here, we like to hug this line right here because we want to take balls out of the air if we can. But our opponents are trying to make sure that we don't. And that's our main goal when we're here too, is we want to work our opponents inside of this box right here, hoping that they cannot hit the ball out of the air. Because just like in tennis, it's an advantage when we can hit a ball from high to low. In pickleball, it's the same thing. We just have an extra fancy line here that makes sure that we have to stay behind it and work a little bit more strategically in terms of left and right rather than kind of all out power. So the very first thing to note is our form here is it's a lot flatter. We're gonna hold the paddle like a hammer. So it's a continental grip. It's actually a really a pure continental grip. We're not doing big old Western forehands here like we do in tennis. This is a good old forehand in tennis because we have strings. I mean, on our Roo Sports pedals, we have guitar strings for some of our models, but we don't have actual strings like tennis, so we don't get a lot of the same whip that we can. We're not whipping these forehands this way, ripping someone wide, because we don't get near the same bite on the pickleball paddle as we do in the tennis racket. So if we're trying to do all this, we're assuming all the risk, and we're not getting all the same reward. So for one, if we're hitting a drop shot in tennis, or if we're hitting you know, a volley and we're trying to bring someone up, then we're gonna really watch how much I cut under this ball doing it this way. When I do it in pickleball right afterwards, I'm not gonna get the same kind of cut because I don't get the same spin, so it's not worth all the risk. So let's go ahead and we'll hit a, a drop shot in tennis. There we go. That was very much underneath. It's gonna be very familiar to you in tennis. Backhand volley, again, my racket was out in front and we're gonna do that in pickleball too. But coming underneath it like that, in pickleball, the court's not that big. So that person would have came over here and they would have hit the ball into the kitchen. So the main goal is just to hit it in the kitchen if you're in a tough spot. And just make sure that we remember that because especially as tennis players, a lot of times we like to get pulled wide and pull off some heroic shot where we pass someone down the line. You can, don't worry. And in singles, we, we definitely can. But in doubles, which is what you're probably playing and it's what's most commonly played, that's harder to do because there are two people on a court that's much smaller than a tennis court. So that same shot that we sliced underneath in tennis, we, we're gonna have a tendency to wanna do in pickleball, but what we actually wanna do is we wanna hit it a lot flatter. So we're actually gonna point the tip of the paddle down a little bit more than we are in tennis. In tennis, we wouldn't do this. We <laughs> I mean, this, this is a surefire way to make sure that someone else crashes the net and puts the ball into our face. So the biggest difference when we were doing this is the tip of the paddle is down this way. This time we can be able to get more time on the paddle with the ball. The pickleball is essentially a wiffle ball too. So we can have more time to get some good topspin by doing it this way. At the same time, we don't have the same wrist break that we do in tennis for a lot of it. Because again, it's not worth the risk to do all this because just like we know in tennis, we wanna hit the sweet spot. And if we're doing all of this, we're gonna hit the sweet spot less and that's gonna obviously give us a, a, more, a much less desirable result. So when we're doing this with a paddle down, one of the things that we focus on is hitting through the ball a little bit more. And so it's a little bit more of a punch this way. So let's go ahead and let's show the same thing backhand. Same thing. So that ball landed right about here. That was a ball that would have moved my opponent to their left 
they would have gotten pulled a little bit and had to hit a bit of a short hop. So a really good spot to aim when you have a more comfortable dink is what we call them. I know it's a funny word, but we have love in tennis that means zero. So it's a dink and this is just a small shot trying to get your opponent to make the decision, should I have taken that out of the air or let it bounce? That is where the money is right here. It's a bit of a tug of war, trying to get your opponent to have it land on their feet. And so they have to either short hop this thing or try to keep it out of the air. So if you hit a nice shot, when you're on offense, there's two types of dinks over here. When you feel like you're confident, the thing is a little bit higher, you can hit it a little bit flatter and hit it closer to this line. If you're in trouble or if you're not comfortable with this, which at first as a tennis player, it's gonna be a little weird. Just lift these dinks and just go for right here, about halfway into the kitchen line. That'll keep you out of trouble. And then when you feel real confident on a good one, you can go ahead and open it up. So the difference between those backhands was it was a little bit more through the ball. This was a little bit more cut through it. So it's gonna be a tendency as a tennis player to wanna do this all the time, try to fight that urge and try to just hit through the ball more. It's a lot more about our legs and our shoulders this time. So one of the advantages of it as a tennis player is you're gonna have a big old nice forehand. That's okay to use. It's absolutely okay to use. So you're gonna hear tennis, or you're gonna hear pickleball players throw out this word called bangers, which means you hit it hard. It's fine. The, the, the way to use it inappropriately is if you're too wild with it. If you can't keep this thing in, then as you know as a tennis player, you shouldn't have kept using that shot. It's too high risk for the reward. But you're gonna be really good at having a big old forehand. And so the hardest shot in pickleball is what we call the third shot. And that's the shot from here where we're trying to work our way up to the net. So we always wanna to get to the net as soon as we can, as long as we're under control. But the third shot, meaning we just served, our opponents hit their return, we're hitting the dreaded third shot. Both opponents are up at the net and they're hungry to hit this ball out of the air. So what do we do? Well, we have two choices. We have the third shot drop and the third shot drive. Drop is gonna be the weird one for tennis players because it's, it's just like we did here. It's just, it's kind of like we're throwing the ball. And so what, we'll do it here. We're here, use our legs and up and over. The goal is to get it into the kitchen and not let our opponents hit it. So notice that that was a lot more like I was actually tossing the ball. A good rule of thumb for this is if you've ever played cornhole, it's like we're throwing that bean bag into that, the cornhole. Or if we're throwing a ball to a little kid that will say, hey, me, 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 toss the ball. You would like to hand it to them to be accurate if you could, but they want you to throw it. You're not gonna be risky with it because you know that's inaccurate. You would use your legs, you would use your arms, you would extend, here you go. That's the shot from here. Just throw it to where you wanna go. Again, that's very different from tennis because you wouldn't do this from here because someone would crash the net and smack it. Remember, they can't do that in pickleball. They cannot volley in that line seven feet from the net, and so you're free to do that. That's the third shot drop. That's all you need to know for now. Cross court is easier to hit than down the line because just like tennis, the net feels a little bit lower that way. So for now, for dropping, just try it cross court. But your big advantage as a tennis player is you're gonna have a good forehand, good forehand drive. And so feel free to open this one up and hit it. Remember the court's not quite as big, so this is not fully unloaded, but watch the difference between a forehand in tennis and a forehand in pickleball. They're gonna be a lot more similar this way. So same thing, I extended through, and then I'm gonna do it in pickleball, same thing. I'm gonna extend, extend through. Both of those were great, they were hard. We're looking to try to find someone's right shoulder. Just like in tennis, it's hard to defend this shot. This is a backhand, that's not so bad. Forehand is here, but right here is a bit of a dead spot. Same thing in pickleball. This is a backhand, this is a forehand, and this is a hard spot. So if you're here, feel free to aim for someone's right shoulder. You're not gonna hurt anybody. Trust me, it's a very big part of the game to do so. And feel free to open it up. You are gonna have a very good shot with this third shot drive because of a tennis background. So if this is hard to do, that little third shot drop, feel free to just hit it. Again, you're not going for a winner here. You're fully expecting them to hit it because this is really gonna work when you first get started. As you start to climb the ranks and pick a ball and you play more and more, you're gonna find, like yourself, you probably have good hands and so do your opponents. So if you hit this thing as hard as you want, they just have to hit it back. So they're gonna have really good hands to get this. So think of it as just another option to get up to the net. Whole goal is to get up to the net because everything gets easier. Just like in tennis, if you flub a volley, it can go over the net if you're up there. If you, you know, hit one off the frame from the baseline, it's a little bit harder to get this thing in. So now we know the whole thing about this kitchen. We know how to do these dinks. It's different than tennis. Use your legs, use the shoulders. We know how to hit the hardest shot in pickleball, the third shot. The third shot drop, just pretending like we're throwing it. We're not breaking our wrist, just getting some natural topspin by using 
a paddle down, lifting up, and then we're using a good paddle, like our Roo Sports paddles with a good carbon fiber face, that grips the ball a little bit more. It's gonna feel a little bit more home, like tennis strings, because you're gonna get some more bite on the ball at the same time. So we've done the third shot, we've done the drops. Now, how do we serve? So we serve underhand in pickleball. It's all underhand, we just drop the ball, and we hit it. So if I can go ahead and show a serve, it will probably help if I have a ball. Put the tennis racket down temporarily, but that's the thing about transitioning from tennis to pickleball. It's not a one-way trip. You're absolutely okay to play both. You can play pickleball and tennis at the same time. They don't mess each other up. If anything, for doubles tennis, pickleball helps. It opens up some opportunities that maybe you didn't know that you had. I've been a big baseline player myself, loving opening up forehands since playing pickleball. My double strategy, these small little shots, has opened it up too. So in serving, it's underhand. So we're not overhand serving here. And we only get one serve. So there's no fault, there's just out. So here, I just like to face my hips to where I'm going. You'll find some people like to serve this way. It's a lot harder. You're asking for perfect timing of all of this. Because if you hit it early, thing goes wide. If you get too excited and you pull it, thing goes wide. If you keep your hips faced to where we need to go, it's gonna reduce a lot of the variables. And the more we got going on, the more that can go wrong. So less is more. Let's face our hips cross court. We still serve cross court. But instead of serving in the service box, we're actually aiming for the back box. So we're not hitting it in the kitchen. That's considered out. We're just going the back cross court box. So it's very simple. We're dropping it and hitting up and through. It looks a lot like the forehand did. It's just legs and extension. That's it. Scoring wise, it's a little bit different, but don't get bogged down by it. Because remember, we learned tennis scoring, which was also very funky. Love means zero. We have games and sets it can be very tricky. This is just a little bit different. It's just something else to learn. I promise you'll be able to get it. When you're playing doubles, there are three other people on the court that will help remember the score for you. It's totally fine. But the way we do it is kind of like a tiebreaker in tennis. The very first person to start the game, that team only serves once. So say I lost that point on that serve. Say that serve was out. Do I get a fault or no? Do I get one serve or do I get two? I get one. So if I miss that serve, our opponents get to serve. So we would give the ball to the other side. We call it a side out, meaning the ball is going to the other side. And then the scoring becomes a little bit more regular. So in pick a ball, we can only score a point on our serve, and we usually play to 11. Some tournaments are 15, but standard is 11. So with only one serve, we have to serve cross court. And each of us, our partner, get to serve until we lose a point. And so when the ball has a side out, the person on the right side of the court, so the deuce side, gets to serve first. So if I just received the ball, I'd be here. I would serve it. So say we won that point, what happens now? I travel to the other side, I switch sides with my partner, and the score is now one to zero. Because they still have zero in this scenario, but we have one. We scored a point because we're serving. So the score is one zero. And there's a third number in pick a ball, which threw me for a loop at the very beginning too. That just means am I the first or second server? Well, because I started on the deuce side when the ball came over, I'm number one. Again, if this is confusing, don't worry about it. Just get a little bit of the lay of the land before we go out there, and everybody will help teach you score, I promise. So it's 1-0-1 one, one on the first server. So say I serve this out, or we played out the point and we lost. I've lost, but I was the first server, and uniquely in pickleball, my partner gets to serve at the same time too, before it's a side out. Catch your paddle if you lose it. So my partner gets to serve, and the score is still 1-0, to zero, but what's that third number? It's a two, they're the second server. All that signifies is if we lose this point, the other teams are gonna get the score. So say we're here and we lost that point now. That's okay, it's a side out, the other team gets to go. So what I would do from this side is I would walk up to the kitchen line because now we're gonna receive the ball. So since the whole goal in pickleball is to get to the kitchen line, when my partner is receiving the ball, I might as well already stand here because why would I hang back there and then come up later? I might as well already be here so that when they try to hit that third shot, remember that hardest shot in pickleball? I'm already here ready and I'm hungry to volley this thing away. So now they're serving, and what's the score? They have zero, so call your own score first. So they would say zero, they would say one, because we still have one point, one, because the first server is serving. And that's the person on the deuce side, side on the right side. So we would go, we'd play that point, and continue it according to that. So quick tip on returning, it's gonna throw you a bit for a loop, coming from tennis is we don't want to beat this thing senseless because the whole point is we want to get to the kitchen line to make that third shot as hard as possible for the opponents. So if we rip this thing, we might get halfway. Yeah, I'll show a return. I might get halfway to the kitchen line. So this thing is too hard. 
It feels good. Not only was that even a little bit long, because the court's smaller than tennis. I would not be up to the kitchen line by the time they hit it, which means instead of making it the hardest shot in pickleball, they have all this to work with before I hit it in the air. So what I'd want to actually do, and what I've actually found from playing for years in pickleball coming from tennis is I don't topspin my returns. You can, but I have found more success just hitting a nice slice, giving myself time, and focusing on depth. So the most important thing about your pickleball return is depth, and you want to arrive at that kitchen line as your opponent is about to strike the ball. That way, you can be up there hungry, drooling, ready to put that thing away. So let's show a better return. So kind of like tennis, we want to get our feet, yep, behind and up. That thing had the depth. I happened to hit that one right here because I wanted either this person to come all the way over and have to hit this as a moving forehand or have this person have to take it as a backhand. You might be thinking now, why didn't they just run up and hit your little weak return out of the air? You can't do that in pickleball. You have to let the return bounce. So there's no serve and volley. So the main things that are different, if you only need to remember these two things, is we cannot serve and volley, and we cannot volley inside of the kitchen. It's actually, its real name is a non-volley zone. They named it the kitchen because if people don't come from tennis, they might not know what a volley is, but obviously we do. So return, nice and soft, just focusing on depth, and then get up to the kitchen line. So if we can, if it's a good return, get all the way up here. If it happens to be a little bit more shallow, they're gonna run up and try to smack it at you. So just right before they're about to hit it, stop. So same thing like in tennis, you don't wanna be caught moving if you can help it. So right before your opponent hits it, just stop, get low, and paddle out in front. Big, big pro tip here, paddle out in front as much as you can. The key to having fast hands, in addition to having a good tennis background like you have, is keeping the paddle out in front. Why? Because you're already right there. It's like if you could shorten your commute for work, if you ripped it at me, I'm just right here already. Instead of having to pick my paddle up and do this, I'm asking for more things, I'm asking for more timing, more variables, more that going on, more that can go wrong. So again, less is more out front and just here. So we've covered scoring. It's easy. Once you get the hang of it, just keep an open mind. Again, there's people out there that will help you keep score. Returns, nice and soft, just focusing on depth. Serving, we know that when the ball travels to our side of the court, whoever serves on the right side, gets to start. We only get one serve, so there's no faults. And then we just keep flip-flopping from kind of add and do side back and forth until we lose a point. So if you lose a point, we give it to our partner if we're the first server, and then they'll serve it out too. There's three numbers in pickleball scoring, unlike tennis. You call your score first, call the opponent's score second, and then just signify if you're the first or second server. You're gonna lose track of scoring a little bit when you're playing, it's totally fine. Everyone else will keep you on track at the same time. So remember to have fun. It is a different sport than tennis. So even though you've played tennis for a while, you could have been a very, very high level tennis player. This is a very different sport. And depending on how ingrained tennis is in your brain, you might have to get out some of this buggy whip, western forehand, sliced backhand differences. Keep tennis on the tennis court. Use some of the good parts, like our fast hands and our forehands and our overheads. So one of the things you might face a little bit in pickleball is people like to lob the ball a little bit more because people in pickleball have developed the ability to throw up a lob quicker than they have to punish somebody with an overhead. As a tennis player, we hit overhand serves. Obviously, we hit overheads. You're probably gonna have a pretty deadly overhead. So if they lob it, tell them thank you. Same thing, point and shoot and smack that thing. So have fun playing pickleball. It's a very fun sport. It's very social, just like we love tennis. Feel free to play tennis at the same time and then enjoy both. But just remember that you have some strengths in tennis so that you will probably be pretty good when you first start. But at the same time, it's a very different sport. It's a different beast to wrangle. So make sure that you keep an open mind and that we just accept the differences of that where this is a little bit smaller. And again, we're just earning that pop-up. So if you're looking for a put away in a winner, just try to do it when you have a ball with 80% success that you can put away. So work them wide, work them wide, take that high ball and smack it away. So thanks again for tuning in to Roo Sports and hopping on in with us. We really appreciate you being here. Thank you. If you enjoyed any of the paddles that you saw in this video, please go to roosports.com and consider purchasing when you find something that you like. These are professional quality paddles at a wallet-friendly price. We'd be happy to have you on the team. If you have any questions about your retirement account, I'm actually a full-time financial advisor with Edward Jones, and I'd be happy to give you a free second opinion on your investments after I understand what's most important to you. So again, thanks for hopping in with us. Please hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell below. It's absolutely the biggest, best, and freest way to say thank you for this video if you receive something of value today. So thanks for tuning in. Next time you see Roo Sports around, hop on in.